Hey guys, it's me, 80 Smurf of Four. So today, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about this week's games. So we have a lot of good games this week, guys. And I know normally I traditionally do on the weekends. However, I think I'm going to do this from the new year on. And that if there's any good games midweek, I will still discuss about them in the video. And I'll probably just do it on Monday. I'll try to get this out on Monday. And um, yeah, and if there's no good midweek games, I'll just keep it traditional Thursday. So we will still discuss the weekend games. There's one game for the weekend. And um, yeah. And for those wondering, um, Barca Atleti game, I will do a video on that. It's just that I'm going to have its own video. So I will not discuss any Barca Atleti game in this one. I'm probably going to drop that preview probably Thursday. Uh, Thursday or Friday, I'll try to get that preview out for you guys early because it's a huge game in La Liga. Huge, huge game. Anyways, enough introductions. Let's go ahead and get started with the first game which we have here. And this is a big one. It's a big one, guys. We got here is Arsenal versus Newcastle. I think this game is a huge game because of the fact of what Arsenal are doing this season. Arsenal have been brilliant this season, guys. Mikel Arteta has made this team to where they are right now. And they've only lost one game this season, and that was on the road to Manchester United. And other than that game, they've been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant this season. You know, I really like the players of Odegaard. Odegaard's really stepping up. He's really shown that he has the credentials to be one of the best midfielders in the Premier League. Some would even say he's better than KDB. I don't want to get into that conversation right now. Um, but you can have an argument about that. And Bukayo Saka has definitely been one of the best wingers in the Premier League. I think that's very uh, much undisputed there. And then obviously, I think even um, Emil Smith-Rowe has been good. You know, even Martinelli has been really good. And the thing was, Arsenal have been so solid. You know, even Ben White has been excellent. Xhaka has been excellent as well. I think these players have been unsung heroes. And Arsenal just looks so good at the moment. As for Newcastle, they've also had a really good start this season. They've also been really good. They've only lost one game this season, which was to Liverpool on the road at Anfield. And they've been brilliant this season. I think Callum Wilson um, and obviously um, Al Marion has been really good. Bruno Guemaris, um, Shaw has been good. Botman's been good. Nick Pope has been good. Trippier has been good. My concern with Newcastle is pretty much the left winger position because I think the left winger position is a bit of a concern there in the sense I don't they don't have... Um, a clinical left winger. Because for me, St. Maximum isn't really that good. And Joe Linton isn't really that good. So if they can get that left winger sorted, then I think Newcastle could do something really dangerous. Because we saw in the last game against Leeds, they created so many chances, they just couldn't score. They're just not clinical enough in the final third. You know? And for, um, you know, insights with this one, it's going to be a big one. Arsenal won the last 11 home games against Newcastle, all competitions. Newcastle beat Arsenal in the last fixture in May, 2000, May. And Newcastle won their last two Premier League games in London. Very interesting. And also kept 28 clean sheets against um, 28 clean sheets against Newcastle Premier League. And Arsenal lost only once. Um, uh, Arsenal lost the opening day fixture, um, New Year's Eve, to Manchester City. And New Year's Day 2022. And they have not lost opening league games in a consecutive calendar year since 1995-96. Latter which was against Newcastle. The stadium, of course, as we know, is Emirates Stadium. Um, and the win probability for Arsenal is 54%, draws 24%, and Newcastle to win is 22%. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. I'm going to say that Arsenal is going to win this game, and I'm going to say they win this game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say they win this game 2-0. I think they're going to win this game 2 goals to nil against Newcastle United. And I think goals will come from Odegaard and Bukayo Saka. Okay, next one we have here is Manchester City. I mean, Chelsea versus Manchester City. Chelsea this season, man, have been so, so poor this season. I have been so just shocked of how bad Chelsea been this season. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they spent the most money this transfer window, the summer one. I think $300 million. And you know what's really concerning with Chelsea? Yes, their attack is not that good. But it's a defense for me that's actually been really worrying. Because they spent so much money on Koulibaly. They spent so much money on Wesley Fofana. They spent so much money on Cucurella. And you're telling me that they they their defense is worse than even Arsenal has a better defense. Even Man City has a better defense. Even Newcastle has a better defense than them. Now, to be fair, their defense is still decent. I mean, only can see 18 goals is generally pretty good compared to other teams because other teams have scored uh, conceded 20 to 30. But it's look at that attack, man. 20 goals? I mean, even teams like Brighton have scored more than them. Even teams like Leicester City have scored more than them. Even Leeds United have scored more than them. That is actually disappointing. And even Tottenham have scored more than them, you know? And I just think that for Chelsea in particular, forwards are so average. 
because you have Sterling, who criticize Sterling all you want. He's actually probably been Chelsea's best forward this season. Kai Havertz has been inconsistent. Christian Pulisic doesn't really score many goals. And then you have Borja, who's pretty much out for the season. Aubameyang, who's been really disappointing. And yeah, Chelsea just not been great this season. And even their midfield as well. Conte is pretty much going to be out for a long time. Jorginho is average at best. I don't think Jorginho is good at all. I don't know why he's getting so hyped. And then you have Mason Mount, who, in my opinion, is very overrated. I don't think Mason Mount's that great. He's a decent player, don't get me wrong. But he's not in, like, the, like, you can't put him in a conversation as, like, Chel- uh, like um, one of Chelsea, one of, like, the best players currently in the world right now. I think that's a bit of a stretch. Um, and, yeah. As for Man City, although they have been good this season, I don't think Man City have been that great this season, especially coming right now. They're in poor form right now. I mean, they just lost to, they just drew to Everton at home. A team, Everton, that is languishing in 16th place. They're fighting for relegation right now. You know, as well as the fact that they lost to Brentford just before the World Cup, I believe, happened. So, it's not as if Man City has been bad. It's just Man City just not as been as good as they generally are. You know, I expect so much more from Man City. And I think Man City have been too much Holland FC. I think Holland is really carrying this team. And it's kind of concerning because as good as Holland is, don't get me wrong, he is a great player. I do feel as though Man City is playing too much off of him. <coughs> and I do think Man City defensively not been that great this season. You know? Um, and so on and so forth. You know? And um, I just feel like the wingers for me have been really underwhelming for Man City. Like the likes of Bernardo Silva, you know, Riyad Mahrez. You know? It just feels as though KDB and um, Holland and Foden have really done their bets. You know? And so on and so forth. So the win probability for Man City is 58%. Draws 23%. Chelsea is 19% for a win. Let's go look at the insights real quickly. Chelsea have lost their last two Premier League home games against Man City. Man City did the double against them last season. And Man City have won uh, seven of the last 10 Premier League games against Chelsea. And Pep Guardiola has just lost seven of his 34. And those seven have come against... Um, and those seven have come to... Seven defeats have come to the London sides in particular to Chelsea and Tottenham. And Man City have won the first Premier League game each of the last talent calendar year since, you know, 2012 Sunderland. So, and they've also won against the last two London sides in the uh, uh, New Year's Eve um, opening game of the New Year calendar. Guys, I'm going to go with uh, Man City to win this game. Even though they haven't really been that great, I still do think Man City is a force to be, team to be reckoned with. And I still don't think Chelsea are that great goal scoring wise. So I'm going to go with Man City to narrowly win this game one goal to nil on the road. And I. I have a feeling that it's not going to be Holland that's going to score, believe it or not. I actually feel like it's going to be Ilkay Gundogan. I think he's actually going to score, believe it or not. And this will be crucial for Man City because Man City is currently a title race right now with Arsenal. And if they don't win this game, they could potentially be like 8 or 10 points behind. Assuming that Arsenal win their game, which they'll be playing tomorrow. So they'll know they'll know um, how many points will be behind. So it's a huge game for them as well. And of course for Chelsea Dragon, the top four. Let's move on to Serie A. We have some interesting games in Serie A. This, for me, is one of the most interesting games in Serie A. Let me see if I can... Yeah, there we go. Move my screen there. Um, this is definitely one of the most interesting games. We have Inter Milan versus Napoli. So let's go ahead and quickly discuss this game. This is a big game because I feel like, for me, this season, Inter Milan have been great this season. I think Inter Milan, even though they had a really terrible start to the season, I think they've picked up form since then, and they've looked really good. My concern with Inter, though, is that they're winning games that they should be winning, but they're losing games that they shouldn't. They're, they're losing games when it comes to big teams. Like, look at this in the table, right? They lost to Milan in the Milan derby. They lost to Juventus just before the World Cup. They lost to Lazio. They lost to Roma. That's kind of worrying for Inter Milan. Is that you can see right there? Their five losses have been against teams that are kind of like similar caliber to them, or if not better than them. And that's my problem with Inter Milan. Is that. That kind of form is just not going to be enough to win a Serie A league title. Now, we know league title is not really about being beating the big teams. It's about being consistent. But if you cannot consistently beat the big teams, you cannot really be in conversation to win the league title. So I think for Inter this season, their main focus right now should be this season. should be to try to get top four. Try to get a top four ace finish. And maybe try to go to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Obviously, that's a different discussion for another day. And... For Inter Milan, I think it's going to be very interesting because Lukaku should be fully fit by now. He should be. And I think that's going to be a huge, huge, um, huge boost for Inter Milan because I do feel Inter really needs him because Lautaro Martinez, he was not that good in the World Cup. And Lautaro Martinez for me is a very inconsistent player. 
Jacko, he's good as a super sub. I'm not really sure he's good as a starter. And you got Joaquin Carrera, who is not that great. So, you know, I think for Inter Milan, they need to have Lukaku back and fire all cylinders. Whereas Napoli this season have been brilliant. Napoli this season have been fantastic this season. Awesome has been brilliant, firing the goals. Cavici has been incredible. Even the players like Nguiza has been incredible as well. And I really like this Napoli team. Uh, Simeone has been great too as well. And yeah, let's look at the win probably. So Napoli is expected to win is 31%. Draw is 28%. Inter is 41%. This is a really big game, guys. Big game here. And so let's go look at the insights real quickly. Napoli have lost 68 the last 152 matches against Inter Milan. Inter won the last four Serie A matches against Napoli at home. Inter won the most matches against Napoli in all competitions. And the last 24 games, Inter have never drawn. Recording 18 wins and 6 defeats. And 2022, no team has scored at least 3 goals and more home Serie A games than Inter Milan. So, yeah, Inter have been really good this season at home in particular. That said, though, I am going to go for a draw for this game. It's going to be difficult to say, but I'm going to go with the draw simply because I wanted to go for the Napoli to win this game, but I do think the World Cup hangover will come into play, and I don't think Napoli will be that great. Whereas Inter Milan, given the fact they're really good at home, I think they're going to just about draw this game. And I'm going to go with a 2-2 draw, guys. A 2-2 draw for this one. Um, I, I could be wrong with, though. Uh, I could see maybe Inter winning, maybe even Napoli to win. But I give. I, I, I am going to go with a draw for this one. A draw for this one. And finally, for the final Serie A game we have here, it is um, AC Milan versus Roma. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the insights for this game yet because I believe the game is going to take place on Sunday. So I'm premium this a bit, maybe too early, but, you know, it's better late than ever, right? Um, for this one, guys, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Milan do this one because with the injury crisis they have, you know. And um, because, like I said, with Milan, man, they have a really good squad. And for Roma as well. Roma, for me, the problem with Roma is just that they just cannot seem to score enough goals. I mean, 18 goals is very underwhelming, you know. And even teams like Udinese have scored more than them. Even teams like Bologna have scored more than them. Even teams like um, Salatini have scored more than them. Their defense has been good, though. They've only conceded 14 goals, which is actually pretty decent. And I think for Roma in particular, man, this is a big clash for them. Because AC Milan coming into this game as favorites, of course. They have a lot of good players. Like, you know, the likes of Rafael Leal has been really good. You know, then you have Olivier Giroud. Then you have, um, you know, uh, Ben Acer, who's been really good, too, as well. And yeah, I think for this one's going to be a close game. I think AC Milan will just about sneak the win here, um, just about narrowly. I think Roma will give a good, good, close encounter. But it just feels as though AC Milan will just have enough in their finishing to edge, edge this one. And I'm going to go with them to slightly edge this one. One goal to nil in San Siro. So I want you guys to comment down below your predictions in the comment section below. Remember, you guys made it all the way this far. Please, considering that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. And by the way, guys, just so you guys know, I have applied for the YouTube Partner Program, so I should be getting monetized on this channel in the next few days or so. Hopefully, it all goes well. And, um, yeah, so you guys should be able to see that, and, um, you know, I can finally get the Super Chats and, um, you know, ads in the videos. So, yeah, all that good stuff, man. Hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. And, real guys, check out the me and my other platforms in the description below. Peace out, guys.